Hello and welcome to the new video series about design, AI and how to connect Figma and all the AI tools. As you can see, I have here some design system components, but the aim of this video series is that I will guide you through implementing Figma MCP using cursor, cloud code and other AI tools that you can use in your design processes. So don't worry if you are a complete beginner, even if you don't know what GitHub is or repository is or where you can start, we will go step by step. I mean it like really step by step. So maybe for those of you that are a bit more advanced, a few episodes in the start will be a bit boring, but the next episodes will be more advanced. So stick around, follow, subscribe and like. If you have any suggestions, you are more than welcome to write them in the comments below. Otherwise, I think it's time that we start. Before we start, I would like to share what I have in mind that will happen in this video series. We will go from beginning and then go level up. So, so how did the design process change? Usually we had a lot of ideas, we made them in Figma, shared the Figma prototype, and then the developer started building in the code and changing everything. But now we are able to use a lot of other tools as well. So for example, V0, Lovable, Replit, all of these tools allow you that whatever is on your mind, you go there, you can try it, and immediately get prototype. And in the end, you can also deploy this prototype. But you can also use uh, tools like cursor or cloud code, and you can start building with the real code. And even if you don't push that code into production, you can still spin off the proper working prototype, which I think it's really useful for designers. And then the third level would be that as designer, you would actually use the proper code, the real production code, and also ship that to the production. This is a bit risky. Not a lot of people allow this or do, but it's definitely more advanced than just building and playing in cursor and cloud code. And then we also have agentic workflows that are just coming. And that means that you can implement a lot of agents that help you build or maybe just test whatever you want inside your company you can connect them both with development and design but the most important thing right now is that you learn about the basics and that's why i want to start from point zero and that means downloading cursor creating github account understanding what is the repository and how you connect both tools so Let's go and start with downloading Cursor first. Okay, so what is Cursor? Cursor is an IDE. And what is IDE? That's Integrate Development Environment. And you can say that this is like Figma, for, but for developers where they have code editor, they have compiler, debugger, then lots of automation tools, and then of course, a lot of additional features. And Cursor, allows us to use AI and different models. And here are a lot of other examples that you can use. You can also connect it with other popular tools like linear. You can change models if you're using something else. But most of all, it's pretty easy to use and also ask Cursor to do things instead of you. So let's go and download it. So when you download Cursor, and you open it for the first time, of course, it will be empty. As you can see, I already have some workspaces here and some folders connected. But in this case, you will click either open project. Maybe you already created something before and you have some code. You can clone repo or connect here. So probably you will start fresh and we will say that we want to clone a repo. And as you can see, if we want to clone the repo, we need to go to the GitHub. And GitHub allows us to bring that folder also locally, work on it, and then push changes back to GitHub. And I would assume that you don't have a GitHub account. So let's also go to GitHub, create an account, and come back. 
So I'm already signed in GitHub and as you can see I have the repositories here on the left side. I already opened one repository where you can see what's going on. So in this case I uploaded design tokens from my design tokens course and then when I click on this repository I can see all the files that are uploaded here. I can also see if there are some issues or if somebody opened something, then pull request, actions, part of which project is it, security, insights, and of course settings. And here I can also add some secrets and variables, but all this stuff is for advanced episodes. Right now the only thing that we will do is create a new repository. So if you want to create a new repo, you can also click on repositories, click new, choose an owner and then we will just add name here. So for the sake of this video, let's just use YouTube. So we will all know what's going on. YouTube and then we will add some descriptions for the YouTube video choose visibility and by default I think you should have it private unless you want to share some useful stuff with public then you will choose public but otherwise private should be default. You can also add some templates, readme files or whatever it's needed but we will just click create repository. So now I already have some information how we can quickly set it up so one option is you can create a new repository on the command line or push an existing repository from the command line. That's also possible. But we will use visual user interface, but we will use user interface right now so you understand exactly what is going on. So you can later on also use the CLI. Um, and let's go back to cursor so we can merge this repository and put it cursor. Woohoo! And we're back. So if I want to clone from GitHub, I can click here and immediately I can see my YouTube repository. So I can click and now I can choose where I want to place it. So I'm using this folder for anything code related and for all my experiments. We will just add it here. Select as repository destination. And now cloning GitHub repository. Okay, it's coming in. As you can see on the left side, would you like to open cloned repository? Open and we have it in the same file. On the left side here, you can see that YouTube is written and all the files that we will create, it will be, we will see them here. Immediately, so on the right side, we also got new chat window that we can use and add our prompts. Okay, so what's important when you're doing the design things here? The first important thing is that you understand when you're adding context. So this button here, add context, means that you can choose a folder or file or code or Figma file, anything that brings context. So add context button is really important because whatever you want cursor to know, you will click here, select files or folders, code that will help cursor to build a better UI, a better prototype, whatever you're building. The next important thing is that for every task that you have, you create a new chat. So for example, let's start by creating a new folder. Create a new folder called filter because later on I will show you how to bring filter component from Figma MCP. So right now it already created on the left side the folder. In the same time you could also go to your folder that you've chosen for coding and you can also create manually of course um, a new folder called filter but of course we will use AI so you can see what's going on here. So right now we have Claude for one opus. We can also choose a different one, GPT-5 and other models. You can define all of these models also in the settings. So if I click on setting, I can click here models and you can see that I have all of this here. But you can also add your own model. So if you click API keys, 
you have open API key and you can paste it in here. So why do I have another API key here? For example, if you're using Cursor Pro subscription, they allow you to have a certain amount of tokens. But if you want to use more, you can also use your own cloud subscription, add the API key here, and you will be able to use it. So if you're interested how to do that, we will now open this your entropic key. Okay, so you can click here, create API key, name it, YouTube, click add, and then you get your API key that you can just copy and add to your cursor. And in this case, you're not just using cursors tokens, but also your own. But since this is just a video and we don't want to share API keys publicly, I will delete this part and let's go back to cursor. And we are back in settings and I'm sure you're wondering, okay, this all sounds really good, but how do I connect Figma with cursor? That's a really good question. So for connecting Figma, you have two options. Some people just add screenshots to a separate folder and then in this chat say, please check my screenshot called X and create a clickable prototype. But since we know that Figma has a Figma MCP server, this is kind of 90s, I would say. So we would like to use Figma MCP server, which means Figma modal context protocol that allows us nation to get the information about our design directly from Figma. And this also means if you're using Figma variables, spacings, auto layout, etc., that cursor can just check what's going on there and copy things here. So to do that, you need to understand how MCP server is added here. I will delete this part now because this is what you have if you don't add Figma MCP and you will also see the message that you don't have any MCP tools. And now we will go to Figma support page, copy the code, come back here and try if everything works. Okay, let's go. This is the official Figma page. We have a guide to the Figma MCP server and we can scroll down and just see how you can register your MCP client. So connect the MCP server to your editor, follow instructions for your specific editor to connect to the Figma MCP server. So as you can see, they have more clients. So you can use VS Code, Cursor, Windsurf, Cloud Code, Warp, Android Studio, Open Hands, Amazon, Replit, and we will choose Cursor. Okay, we will copy that code directly to Figma immediately, but I just also want to share this important information that you also need to enable the local MCP server in your Figma. So that means opening the Figma desktop app and making sure that if you click on preferences that you see that you're en enabled local MCP server. But let's go first to cursor, copy the code and see what happens. Okay, I click on edit, I copy paste this code, I save it and then I should see the green circle here. And I can also turn it off if I want to. But now that we added this MCP server, we can close these windows and just continue working on here. So right now I want to go to Figma, choose my design and for the start just one simple component and show you how, how this works. Okay, we said that the first important thing is to also check preferences. So if you go here to Figma and you click here, preferences, you need to enable local MCP server. But I think that by default now everything works, so this should be fine. Okay, so now I want to navigate to this component because I somehow feel that this is an excellent exercise and quite simple for starting with this wipe coding series. We have a filter, if nothing is applied, no rules are applied, we have a plus button. If it's applied, we see the X button and something applied here. And when you want to share your component with cursor, 
you have to click here, share, copy the link and go to cursor. And now in cursor, we still see what I wrote before and I never submitted it. Please check my screenshot called XY and create a clickable prototype. Now I will just say, please create a clickable prototype for this filter component. And so today I don't want to focus on prompts and what is good structure for the prompt. I just want to start simple so you understand the basic things and then from the episode to episode, we will implement better way of communicating with cursor and also other AI tools. In this case, you can see that Figma was added and that our AI started working on the clickable prototype. And you will see if everything is successful, a little notification that Figma get code, get screenshot was added and also used. Okay, so cursor started using these to-dos and we can see that we have five steps. First for generating component code, then prototype files, implementing interactive behaviors, add minimal styles and add readme file. So let's wait. This is the notification I said before. So called get code and called get screenshot. That means that the cursor is really using our Figma MCP and is checking Figma designs. I also want to share that it's really important that your Figma designs are clean. It helps a lot if you're using auto layout and Figma variables and that everything is named properly. I was experimenting a lot with naming. So it also works if you're using AI tool for renaming layers from Figma. So it's not necessary that each layer has a proper name. It's just important that the structure is clear. So then the results are much, much better. Now we got this snippet here and we can also see which colors were used. So container background. Yeah, I was really using that icon weak and the color icon strong, border strong, outline, etc. And on the left side, we can see index, HTML, readme, script, and styles. And we can click on open with live server. A few moments later. What we got here, it's certainly not perfect. I mean, it's clickable. As you can see, the hover color is a bit different, but we have an empty circle and then also something that's full here, but it doesn't follow the logic for using plus and X button. And now we can go back to cursor and just say what we don't like and that we would like to use font awesome and we will come back to see the result. So the logic is the same as you are talking with your developer friend. We will just write use font awesome for icons, inactive state has plus button, active state when filter is chosen has an exact icon. Please adapt the logic. And now we wait a few moments to see how and what. A few moments later. Okay, cursor implemented plus icons and also X. We have the hover state, but it's not completely the same. And why this happens is because we are using different models. Right now we use GPT-5. We will try to use cloud code and compare with other models as well. But for the first exercise, I think this is enough. But just that you have in mind what we are planning to do is that we want to have a repeatable process where in the end we can come with one prompt to this. So for example, you will work in Figma and then you will want to create a component which will be served for you in this interactive one pager and this can be shared then with your co-workers using the same properties, showing the different sizes and also having design tokens references laid down for you. So yeah, this is our goal, but we have to come there and follow along and see you in the next episode. Bye.